the 10 minute English teacher, let's get you exam ready. Today we're revising A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens for GCSE English Literature. And we're thinking about Scrooge quotes you must know from the beginning of the novella. Here we have an action trail for chapter one or stave one, both is permissible in your exam. So we want to think about what actually happens in that chapter. At the very beginning of it, we get some background information about Scrooge and we find out about Marley, his business partner, having died. And at the end of this chapter, um, Jacob Marley's ghost leaves and um, after speaking with him and Scrooge falls asleep. Um, now, you need to think carefully about what happens in between those two moments. Um, we, I'm about to tell you myself, but if you want to pause now, or you can have a little bit of a think. How much do you remember from chapter one? Otherwise, let's think about what actually does happen in that opening chapter. OK, after we get that background information about Scrooge, we find ourselves at his counting house and he's there. Um, with Bob Cratchit on Christmas Eve and Scrooge's nephew Fred arrives to invite Scrooge to Christmas um, dinner with him um, the next day something that Scrooge is disagreeable towards isn't interested and, and bids farewell to Fred and sends him on his way without any cheer whatsoever so we see you know a nice kind um, Fred contrasted with Scrooge right at the beginning then we have charity collectors turn up. They're collecting money for the poor. Would you like to give some money to the poor? And Scrooge says, are there no prisons? He's got no interest in giving any money to anyone and thinks that they should be punished for their poverty. And then it's time to pack up and go home for the day. Bob Cratchit, who is um, Scrooge's clerk, um, is on his way home to his family. Scrooge is annoyed that he's having to give Bob Cratchit the day off. Uh, and then they depart. Um, We've got Scrooge on his way home to his dark and miserable house. And when he's there, in the door knocker, he sees the face of his old business partner, Jacob Marley. But he goes inside and um, after, um, after getting himself back, recollecting his senses, he goes back inside his house. Um, and he goes downstairs and he can hear noises in the cellar. And then he hears up the stairs um, a clanking sound like chains being dragged along. And then we've got Jacob Marley's ghost turning up. That's the person that Scrooge used to work with, someone who was just as greedy and interested in money as Scrooge was. And this ghost says, you are going to be visited by three spirits. They're going to haunt you and they're going to turn up to give you a bit of a message. You need to listen to them very, very carefully. Um, otherwise, you'll end up living your afterlife like I am, tortured and punished forever. Um, and then he disappears out the window and joins a big, long line of other tortured ghosts that are that are miserable in the afterlife just like he is um, and then Scrooge falls asleep as you would do if you'd just gone through all that if you were old Scrooge so he falls asleep and then um, you know it's not long before the onset of the first visit which comes in the next chapter so for the examination for you to really impress your examiner you need to say something conceptualized explore a really big idea or a theme um, in quite an interesting way and you can do that by thinking about how Dickens uses light and darkness in the novella a novella is just a a big word for little novel really it's a short novel only five chapters so we can call it a novella so Scrooge is associated with darkness in stave one which we associate with evil sin and punishment this is used in binary opposition with light, which we associate with redemption. So we're wondering which one of those two oppositions will succeed in the novel. Is light going to win or darkness? And Scrooge is clearly associated with darkness very, very much in, the, in that opening of the novella. For the exam, you need to know some key references to be able to refer to, and you need to know them confidently. When you go into the exam, you don't get the text, you're on your own, and you need to know some references from memory, and also what to say about them in order to really impress the examiner. So here are half a dozen really good quotes that we can learn and know um, to be able to talk about Scrooge in the opening of the novel. But also, remember, you might get a question that asks you about a key theme, something like family or greed. And if that's the case, these quotes are also going to come in handy. It's really good to think when it comes to 
committing quotes to memory and thinking carefully about learning them and knowing them really well it's really important that you think which ones can i use in a in a number of different situations top left hand corner we've got darkness was cheap and scrooge liked it so we're bringing in that binary opposition of darkness and light and the idea that scrooge is embracing a sort of life of evil really almost um and we find out in this opening chapter that he's facing punishment in the afterlife No wind that blew was bitterer than he. Um, And that is Dickens using the weather to sort of reflect Scrooge's character here. That sort of symbolises the sort of evil and sin and selfishness that's associated with Scrooge at the beginning. And it makes us wonder, I wonder, if there is redemption, will the weather change um, to sort of symbolise and signify that? Scrooge is described to be as solitary as an oyster. We all love a simile, and this is a great one because oysters are something we also associate with the dark. They um, are grown at the bottom of the sea. That's where, you all, that's where they live. Um, and the idea of the oyster here in this simile is quite an interesting image to choose because inside an oyster, there is sometimes, if you're very lucky, a pearl. So this simile is suggesting that Scrooge is lonely and we're associating him with darkness and evil here and sin and and um, and death effectively but we've also got our idea of a pearl inside an oyster so it's suggesting that inside scrooge there might be something good waiting to be found that's like foreshadowing this change in scrooge charity collectors turn up and scrooge says are there no prisons and that's a really interesting question that he asks them an interrogative if you want to sound really clever um because it shows that he questions every, or he questions others, but he doesn't really question the impact that he has, and you know how he could affect other people and how he could improve the lives of others. And prisons are contextually an interesting thing for Dickens to mention. His parents went to prison because they couldn't pay back creditors like Scrooge. So it's you know from a personal perspective that Dickens is writing, really wanting to change the attitudes of his readers. Fred turns up, he's got married, come for Christmas, Scrooge says no. Why did you get married, is what he says. So Scrooge doesn't understand the idea of sharing your lives with other people um, in order to be happy. And he is also a tight-fisted hand at the grindstone. So the idea of a tight-fisted hand has got sort of allusions to violence. The idea that Scrooge is really, really um, ungenerous and selfish is being um, explored here. But interestingly, later on, we've got the ghost of Christmas present that we'll meet in the, um, the third chapter. And he has got an open hand. So he's used to contrast Scrooge. So when you might get a question about one of the ghosts, it's nice to be comparative and say, you know, in many ways, this ghost is not like the Scrooge that we come to meet in chapter one. So regardless of the question, these descriptions of Scrooge are really great because you can get them into a multitude of different situations in the examination. Okay, check out the other videos on my channel. I'll continue to add content and feel free to ask for something you'd like to see me cover in the comments section. Don't forget to like like and subscribe and keep revising. Thanks for joining me. Thank you very much.